If you're guilty of yelling, it tips stalled after a crash, then be sure to tune into this one. Stalls aren't what happens when you suck at driving a stick. Today, we're going to dive into what a stall is, how to recognize when approaching, proper stall recovery, how different wing types stall, and once and for all, clear up the never-ending tip stall debate in RC. So, what is a stall? Before we can get into that, we need to understand a couple base concepts. What a cord line is, what relative wind is, and what an angle of attack is. A cord line is an imaginary straight line connecting the leading edge of a wing to the trailing edge of a wing. Relative wind is the airflow relative to a moving object. The easiest way to grasp this is by sticking your flat hand out of the window of your moving car on the freeway. The wind blowing by is a relative wind. A relative wind has been created by moving your hand through the air by way of your driving car. Think of your flat hand sitting in the relative wind as a simulated wing's cord line in flight. This is where we can get into how to define an angle of attack. Angle of attack is the angle between the cord line, your flat hand, and the relative wind, the wind blowing past your car in the freeway. In order to produce lift with your wings, an angle of attack to the relative wind is required. Higher angles of attack produce more lift up to a point called the critical angle of attack. So drum roll. What's a stall? A stall is defined as when your wing exceeds the critical angle of attack. On most planes, this angle is typically between 10 to 20 degrees. Let's quickly clear the air on a few important concepts to understand. First, a wing can stall at any non-zero airspeed or at any attitude. We'll dig more into this one in a bit. The second concept is that some pilots often believe an airfoil stops producing lift when it stalls. In a stall, the wing does not totally stop producing lift. Rather, it cannot generate adequate lift to maintain the present load factor, which we'll dive into as well in a minute. The third concept is that angle of attack and attitude aren't synonymous. Simply put, attitude is the angle or orientation between the airplane and the horizon. This is entirely separate from your angle of attack. Think of a fighter jet climbing vertically at 90 degrees in relation to the horizon. If its angle of attack was 90 degrees, it would be piloted by Goose. Before we move forward, there's a couple more terms we'd like to define to help grasp some more upcoming concepts. Load factor and accelerated stalls. Load factor is how much lift you are producing compared to how much your aircraft weighs. Load factor is described in terms of G's or G-force, with the gravity we feel standing on Earth being 1G. As an example, if you are in a steep level coordinated turn at 60 degrees of bank, you are pulling 2 Gs or producing twice as much lift as you weigh. If a wing stalls at anything above 1 G, it's considered an accelerated stall. What does this mean to us RC pilots? A wing can stall at practically any airspeed or attitude. As RC pilots, we don't fly off of an airspeed indicator or an angle of attack gauge, unless you're our buddy Keith, who invented an angle of attack gauge for his RC F-16 while flying FPV. We'll be doing a full video on this setup soon, so stay tuned. Anyway, since us line of sighters don't use legit instruments, we learn how to gauge our angle of attack from a third person perspective. Accelerated stalls are things we've all seen at our flying fields, maybe without even realizing that it's what happened. Yanking hard on up elevator when you realize the ground is coming up quicker than you planned, or on the base to final turn, just to name a few examples of where they can happen. So, how do we recover when we stall? Unload the wing. That's it. In other words, make the load factor on the wing less than what it's currently attempting to support, which is causing it to exceed its critical angle of attack. This is done by means of reducing your elevator input, meaning generally giving some level of down elevator, which you'll also hear referred to as applying forward pressure. Funny enough, in most planes, within their proper center of gravity limits, recovering from a stall can be accomplished by simply letting go of the elevator or letting it naturally return to a neutral stick. It really doesn't take much. So why does unloading the wing work? Reducing elevator input in the forward direction reduces the angle of attack below the critical angle of attack on the wings, thereby returning them to a healthy flight condition, assuming you are coordinated at the time of a stall, of course. More on the importance of being coordinated later when we discuss spins. Be careful when recovering from stalls. It's easy to revert to human nature, which equates to ground getting closer, must pull up, this reversion to our primary instincts has been known to happen immediately when seeing a stall. In RC, we see this happen all the time when someone is flying a more advanced or higher wing loading airplane without sufficient experience. Base to final stall, wing drop, etc. Folks often induce a stall even after properly recovering from one in the first place. This common error is referred to as a secondary stall. In order to avoid a secondary stall, unload the wing to recover, and then roll the wings level with the horizon, and very smoothly and gently bring the nose up back to level flight. It's normal to want to get the plane into a level flight condition ASAP post-stall, especially when a stall happens very low to the ground. Fight that urge in order to prevent even worse disaster, but also understand that at low altitudes, sometimes a recovery may not be possible depending on the plane and conditions. The best way to undo the primal instinct of wanting to pull up too quickly 
is practice, practice, practice. Up high, of course. Now that we've discussed the basics of stalls, or stalls 101, let's move into more of the intricacies behind what's happening with them on various types of wings, as well as the different types of stalls, including the awaited infamous RC tip stall jargon, stalls 201. The reality is, depending on the type of wing your plane has, this profile view doesn't happen across all parts of the wing at the same time. Let's take a look at what's referred to as stall propagation in a top-down view showing different wing types. There are ways that manufacturers can help prevent nasty bites using fancy terms such as washout or things like a dog tooth like on the baby habu. But in general, you'll notice that tapered and swept wings both make tip stalls more likely, have fun in slow flight. So let's move into defining tip stalls, asymmetric stalls, spins, and the differences between all of them. Once and for all, what's a tip stall? A tip stall is real, and it's a stall that occurs on the tip of the wing first, rather than the whole wing or just on the inboard. Remember those top-down views we showed you? This visual shows that the wing types more susceptible to tip stalls are swept wings, wings with a higher taper, and even crappily designed or built wings with odd twists throughout the span, leading to inconsistent angles of attack across the wing in flight. Oh God. Oh kill it, kill it, kill the throttle! Funny enough, in the RC world, even small amounts of hangar rash or the lateral, side to side, center of gravity being off, can cause your plane to consistently drop one wing before the other. This is especially true if you use aileron trim to correct for it. Just ask the OCD iMac boys. How about asymmetric stalls? By definition, an asymmetric stall is when one wing stalls before the other. Therefore, a tip stall is an asymmetric stall, but not all asymmetric stalls are tip stalls. It's confusing at first, but hear us out. If you're flying a plane with a wing that's anything other than a tapered or swept wing, then 99% of the time, if a wing drops, it's an asymmetric stall, plain and simple. Don't overthink it. How about spins? Well, a spin is a condition that's generally entered via an uncoordinated 1G stall that leads to one wing being more stalled than the other, aka, in most cases, an asymmetric stall that went way too far. This creates angular velocity that looks similar to your plane spinning in a toilet bowl, with gravity pulling the plane down the drain. A spin is generally the side effect of swallowing the asymmetric stall pill and failing to recover correctly from Spins Anonymous. We'll get into how to properly recover from tip stalls, asymmetric stalls, and spins, but we'd like to address the elephant in the room at RC Fields first. How can you properly diagnose or even claim that a tip stall occurred versus an asymmetric stall versus a spin when you were that guy at the field and want to claim what caused your crash? Well, the reality is that without data from a wind tunnel or fancy stall tape on the wings, there's no way to definitively make an armchair engineer call on this from the sidelines. Assuming you did have wind tunnel or stall tape data somehow, a tip stall is characterized by a loss of aileron effectiveness and a generally rapid roll of the plane onto its back, belly up. An asymmetric stall is characterized by a wing drop but not necessarily nearly as violently as a tip stall. In other words, it may not lead to a belly up incident. A spin is what we mentioned before, an asymmetric stall not recovered from correctly that leads to the aviation equivalent of flushing your plane down the toilet. So hear us out on this one and spread the word if you agree. If you crash from some form of wing dropping stall, avoid useless debates at the field or in comment sections online. When asked what caused your crash, simply say, I dropped a wing. Saying, I dropped a wing, covers all of your bases for what could have happened and prevents any dumb arguments from occurring from the armchair NTSB board of directors. All right, now that that's behind us, let's wrap things up with taking a look at how to recover from tip stalls, asymmetric stalls, and spins. Let's start with tip stalls and asymmetric stalls first. If handled quickly and properly, recovering from these will just look like an uncommanded roll returned to level flight. This means you've avoided having your asymmetric stall become a spin. With tip stalls and asymmetric stalls, the second a wing drops, reduce your back pressure or unload the wing, smoothly roll the wings back to level, and then gently bring the plane back to level flight with your elevator. This all happens really fast, so practicing all of it up high is great practice to build the proper muscle memory. Try it with different power settings as well, ranging from idle to even full throttle, as long as that won't rip your wings off, as well as at varying bank angles. It's great practice. Fun fact, some asymmetric stalls can be defined as incipient spins, which are defined as when your plane stalls, drops the wings, and the toilet bowl rotation starts until the spin becomes fully developed. If your incipient spin becomes a fully developed spin despite your best efforts to avoid it, then you likely ended up disappointing both of our lord and saviors, Bob Hoover and Josh Bixler. Don't worry, recovery is very similar. In the full-scale world, the acronym PAIR is taught. PAIR stands for power to idle, ailerons neutral, rudder opposite direction of the spin, and elevator forward. Here's the logic behind the mnemonic. P. 
Power to Idle is there to guarantee the lowest angular velocity before attempting to recover. As with a 3D RC plane doing flat spins, the more power you have, the faster the plane rotates. It's the same concept here, but we want the opposite. A. Ailerons to neutral is there to prevent a very dangerous common error in a spin. If you're in a spin and try to stop the spin by using opposite ailerons, you're actually making the spin worse. Why? Let's circle back to chord lines. Let's say you were spinning to the left. If you were to apply right aileron to recover, it would lower the left aileron, which will dramatically alter the chord line at the wingtip of the left wing and increase the angle of attack there, which will only further wind up your spin. In addition to this, think of 3D planes doing flat spins again. When you use opposite aileron to the direction of the spin, aka cross control, it also flattens it. This makes it take longer to recover as well, depending on the plane. Keep those ailerons neutral. R. Rudder opposite direction of the spin is the correct way to reduce and hopefully stop the angular velocity of your flying toilet bowl flusher. In full scale, we use full opposite rudder, but in RC, it may not take quite that much. It'll vary from plane to plane. E. Elevator forward is the final and most important part of this whole equation. This circles back to basic stall recovery 101. Unload the wing. After accomplishing all these tasks in this order, it really does happen quick, you should be safely flying direct to humble up. As with any book taught stick and rudder acronym, it's good to be familiar with pair, but following pair to a T isn't necessarily mandatory to recover safely, especially in RC planes. An airplane undisturbed by us, the imperfect pilots, will fly on its own. When planes get into scenarios such as tip stalls, asymmetric stalls, and spins, you, the dummy pilot, got it there. Let it go. In our experience, letting go of all the flight controls will get any well-designed and balanced airplane flying again just fine, both in RC and in a lot of full-scale airplanes. The only difference is that recovery may take a little longer than following pair religiously. Pair comes into play when your adrenaline is high and primary training hopefully kicks in properly. It's great for this and has saved lives in full-scale. Give the let it go method a try sometime in RC a pie to start. You'll be surprised by the results. Help us change the stall culture in RC. Say no to tip stalls and say hello to I dropped a wing. Let us know if you'd buy a t-shirt that says I dropped a wing on it too. We've been considering making them. If this video successfully taught you about why the RC community shouldn't use the term tip stall as a blanket term for crashing from a stall, be sure to like and subscribe. Special thanks to our friends Adam and Woody for the help in writing this video. They are both very accomplished aeronautical engineers and fly both RC and full scale. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll see you next week with a new upload.